Good day, everybody. Scott Sable here in the Dick Goddard Weather Office. So, back at the beginning of uh, November, late October, early November, we were talking about the long-range outlook with this dominant El Nino, and and uh, you know, a lot of times we try to kind of give you an idea of what's happening on the seasonal level, which sometimes can be very difficult. But what we have a better handle on nowadays is getting a better idea of what's happening on the two and three and four-week time scales, looking at variables around the world that are um, a little more predictable. And the warmth that we've had in December, really not a big surprise here but what's the reason let's look at some of those drivers early on here what we're looking at is this and uh, this is just one of many of them uh, the first one is this huge ridge of high pressure which developed over the Kara Sea, and it's now right over Siberia, and it's been not only strong, but it's been driving temperatures down well below normal across central Siberia, like 30, 40, 50 below zero. Uh, not every day, but but the, the, the cold has been pretty substantial. On the southern edge of this, in central China, the temperatures have been in the 60s, so in essence, we have a 100 plus degree temperature difference north to south across Asia, and what that's done as it, uh, as it continues to uh, just kind of sit there and be fairly persistent is it's created this extremely powerful west to east northern Pacific jet stream and you couple that with persistent low pressure over the northern Pacific and over Alaska and this jet stream uh, is really a dominant um, a dominant feature and it's also kept the, the push of cold air pretty much out of the picture. You don't really see any buckling in the jet stream recently and so what happens is this west to east flow has continued across North America and it's kept us slightly above average for the first couple weeks of December. On top of all that we have the ongoing El Nino active panhandle storm track out of Texas. A few of these have kind of gone up the east coast as well. And then you also have other shorter-lived tropical influences, and one of these is called the MJO. And these little disturbances move along the equator, and if they move in a favorable phase, where along with a very high intensity, and right now the, the forecast, and this is before Thanksgiving, was strongly hinting at above normal temperatures, and it's been in a favorable phase for that for quite a while. So this is kind of what we've seen over the last couple of weeks. Now, that's been driving the pattern here. What are we looking at as we look down the road? Well, well, this pattern should continue probably for another week, week and a half. Again, it's December 14th as I'm talking about this. And here, even here in northern Ohio, the temperatures have been uh, pretty warm. It's been the sixth warmest December on record so far through the first 12 days. The intrusions of cold have been brief, right? We get a day in the 30s, maybe two days. It backs off again. We'll have another one probably early next week, and that cold begins to back off again. So again, I don't really foresee this pattern changing too much through Christmas. So the active panhandle storm track is still in the forecast now. We're going to be tracking one of these coming up early next week, and I think we'll have another one probably the weekend right around Christmas time. But even with these panhandle storm systems, the temperatures will be trending near or slightly above average. All right, looking beyond that, we'll keep the El Nino going. Tropical influences, that MJO is going to start to shift to more of a favorable phase for cold. We still have that ridge which developed over Siberia. What's happening now is that that ridge is interacting with the Himalayan mountains. And when that happens, it allows for what we call planetary waves. There are waves in the atmosphere that start to propagate and move uh, right up into the upper atmosphere and since we're in the higher latitudes here uh, they start to propagate in the higher latitudes uh, what also happens here is that it strongly influences uh, the polar jet stream and it also influences the polar vortex remember the polar vortex we talked about that you know in recent uh, winters when it gets cold it's always there over the North Pole but what ha what happens is it can actually influence the weakening of the polar vortex so you get that influence with that ridge it interacts with the Himalayan mountains you get these waves that propagate into the top of the atmosphere, you also get what's called stratospheric warming. It's warming at the top of the atmosphere due to compression. And when you get that type of warming at the top of the atmosphere, you end up getting high pressure and extreme cold at the surface over the North Pole. So you factor in all these different variables here along with the potential now for a ridge to develop yeah, over Greenland we'll and what we are looking at now as we head into January is more frequent colder intrusions. Uh, again, it won't be every day where we get super cold but we're looking at colder intrusions along with that Panhandle storm track and all this I think is pointing to a more, more of an active January winter weather wise across much of the middle of the country. Stay tuned, we'll know more about all those day-to-day -day details as we uh, as we get closer.